Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Today we're going to work on the crankshaft. So why don't you go to my website, gregsmachineshop.com, download a set of plans and follow along with me. Let's go. I start with a bar of mild steel. I'm using 1018 cold rolled steel. Not my first choice. I'd prefer 1144 or 4140 chrome moly or even 121114. But since we'll be using ball bearings and bronze bushings in all the journals, 1018 will be fine for this application. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I cut the workpiece a half inch longer than the final crankshaft. I'll be cutting off a quarter inch off of each of the ends, removing the center drilled hole that we'll be using to mount the crankshaft on centers. In the wallaby, the two pistons move in unison. One is on the compression stroke, while the other is on the exhaust stroke. This results in requiring only two axes to require machining on the lathe. We use the edge finder to touch off on the workpiece, and then locate and drill two holes on our journal axes using a 5 16 center drill. We want a nice shoulder for our lathe centers to write upon. We do this on both ends of the workpiece, ensuring we touch off on the same surfaces. The next order of business is to remove as much material as we can with the mill. We'd like to do as little machining as we can get away with on the lathe, primarily because a lot of the cutting is done with an interrupted cut, which imparts a shock to the workpiece, which has the potential to distort it. We'll turn the pin journals first, so we'll use a drill and an end mill to remove most of the material between the webs at these points. But before we start the work on the lathe, we need to address the cutting tools we're going to use. They're a little bit specialized. A couple of them are designed to cut the sides of the webs, and the third is used to cut the journals themselves. I shape these tools from high-speed steel. The two used to machine the sides of the webs are fairly straightforward, but the one for machining the journal needs a little explanation. We want a wide, straight cutter, but such a large cutting surface creates chatter even at slow speeds, so we bifurcate the end of it to give ourselves two smaller cutting surfaces that we move back and forth. This results in a tool that I refer to as a serpent's tongue. Now that we're happy with our cutting tools, it's time to mount the workpiece in the lathe between centers. I have a dead center mounted in the chuck of the lathe and a live center mounted in the tailstock. We have our lathe dog clamped tight to the workpiece and I use a zip tie to secure it to the drive pin. I run the carriage back and forth making sure I have good range of motion and don't run into the tailstock. I use the live center to adjust the height of the cutting tool. I like it right on the center axis of the lathe. When machining, I think in terms of roughing operations and then finishing operations. When roughing, I'm focused on removing as much material as I can, but leaving plenty of material for the finishing operation. Here I'll probably be shooting for 25 thousandths. So I start here roughing out the crank webs, working on a nice finish, but leaving plenty of material for the finishing operation. I load the left hand tool first and finish two of the crank web sides. Then switch to the right hand tool and rough out the other two crank web sides. Then, rough out the journal itself, bringing it to within 50 to 25 thousandths of final dimension. Notice how these chips are magnetized and clicked on the tool holder. They make nasty splinters. The two crank pin journals are identical and are 1 and 3 eighths of an inch apart, so I make all features this distance. When I'm happy with the sides of the crank webs, I move to finish the crank journals themselves, slowly approaching my 0.5 inch diameter. The last few passes I run at about 100 RPM on the lathe, the slowest it will go. It's important to have an inside radius between the journal and the sides of the crank web. We don't want a stress riser here. Notice how I've left plenty of material in the corner during my roughing operation so I can make this nice radius. I'm happy with that. Those are some good looking crank pin journals. Now that we've finished with our crank pin journals, it's time to turn our attention to the main bearing journals. 
However, it's not as simple as switching from our crank pin journal centers to the main bearing centers in the lathe. It turns out we use a lot of pressure from the tail stock squeezing our part between centers. We need to put some precision spacers between the crank webs at the crank pin journals. And I want to emphasize the word precision. If we don't use the spacer blocks at all, or if they're too small, the webs at the crank pin journals are squeezed and will machine our main bearing journal straight. But once we release it from the lathe, the crankshaft will flex and the main bearing journals will no longer be collinear. Likewise, if our precision spacers are too large, we can actually wedge open the space at the crank pin journals. And again, once we remove them, the crankshaft will spring back to its original position and our main bearing journals will not be collinear. These precision spacers need to easily slide between the crank webs. I've used five minute epoxy to hold the spacers in place and then wrap them with safety wire to ensure they don't come free. We need to ensure we don't overheat the part when we're machining it so the five minute epoxy doesn't soften. But before we install them, we need to do like we did before and rough out as much material as we can on the mill. I started with three quarters inch thick bar stock, so I need to remove a sixteenth of an inch from both sides to get to the five eighths thickness I need. We chain drill and then use the end mill to clean up the crankshaft before we install our spacers and move back to the lathe. We begin roughing the main bearing journals, just like we did on the crank pin journals. And we want to be working as close to the lathe chuck as we can. So we'll work on the left hand side of the workpiece, then flip it around in the lathe and work on the other end. Well, I think this is a great place to take a break. I'll go ahead and finish the roughing of the crankshaft, and next time we get together, we'll do all of the finish work on the main bearing journal axis. So until next time, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Take care.